ACT CRAM, English Language Conventions, Inappropriate Verb Tense, 11th Grade Skill Level, ACT Foundations, Question 30, Me Medicine, Antidote Your Ignorance, ACT English Foundation, Verb Tense, Question 30, Does the following text have an inappropriate shift in verb tense? If so, fix any verbs that don't match the tense of the verb in bold. In the yoga posture, vrikshasana, or tree pose, the practitioner stands firmly on one foot and place the other foot on the opposite inner thigh. Here's what you need to understand. The tense of a verb tells when the action takes place. You should generally avoid shifting tenses within or between sentences unless you need to reflect the time change. Let's take a look at this example. Kathy grew up in Cleveland, but now she lives in Pittsburgh. The sentence shifts to the present tense to reflect a time change. This is appropriate in this instance. We shift from Kathy's younger years as indicated by the verb phrase grew up, and then to her present adult self with the verb lives. As I previously stated, this shift in tense is appropriate. Or check out this second example. Rachel grabbed the microphone and sings to the crowd. There is no need to reflect a time change. So both verbs should be in the same tense. The first featured verb grabbed is written in the simple singular past verb tense. So we know the singing also took place in the past. However, the second verb sings is written in the simple, singular, present verb tense. There is no need to reflect the time change. Both verbs should be in the same tense in this instance. Shifting the tense of the second verb to its present tense verb form is incorrect. Because this creates inconsistency in the overall tense of the sentence. Change things to its simple, singular, third person, past tense verb form to restore consistency. There you have it. We change sings to sang. It's simple, singular, third person, past tense, verb form. We have restored consistency in this sentence, and this new verb form is correct. However, you may shift tenses if you need to use the present tense to state a general truth. You may also shift to the present tense to discuss the nature or contents of an artistic work, such as a book film, or painting. This use of the present tense is called the literary present tense. Let's take a look at this example of a general truth. Mr. Smith taught his students that the brain uses around 20% of the body's energy. The sentence shifts to the present tense to state a general truth. This shift is appropriate in this instance. We shift from a lesson Mr. Smith gave in the past to a description of a biology fact that he shared during this lesson that is also a general truth. Hence, our use of a shift to the present tense is warranted. Let's take a look at this example of the literary present tense. Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet in the late 1500s, but the play explores themes that are still relevant today. The sentence shift to the present tense to discuss the nature and contents of the artistic work, Romeo and Juliet. This tense shift to the present is appropriate in this instance. All right, back to the original question, now for the solution. Look at the verb in bold, stands. It is in the present tense. However, notice that the second verb, placed, is written as a simple, singular, third person, past tense verb form. There is no need to reflect the time change. The information that follows place is a general truth about the rikshasana posture. We should remain in the present tense. So this is an inappropriate shift in verb tense. Change placed to its simple, singular, third person present tense verb form to restore consistency. Here you have it. We've changed place to places. It's simple, singular, Third person, present tense, verb form. We have restored consistency, and this verb form is now correct.